Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 109 of the Let's Talk Tuesdays podcast. My name is Brendan Plays. This is the show where we answer all the questions that you send in every single week on the Brendan Plays forums at brendanplays.com. Bought those forums in the YouTube comment section down below, over the Facebook page at Brendan Plays Official, or by leaving a voicemail on the website. I actually forgot, forgot the Facebook page again this week. I apologize. It's something I just gotta. I just gotta loop it. I just gotta like keep doing it, like set it up so schedule a post every week for like the next three months <laughs> because there's a reason why i forgot because today i was super super busy um really really busy week ahead um we'll get more into that in a moment but um yeah so i do apologize for that but um just a few quick links that you guys need to go check out my first of all my twitter page we are growing some followers which is really good i appreciate everyone that's gone on the twitter page and has followed that's the best way you can stay in touch with everything that i'm doing and all the updates and news about videos um, stream times um, just news that in my thoughts and opinions and things just a little bit of everything so twitter brendan plays is that one there facebook page facebook page as well i should say uh, obviously a great way to leave questions there and kind of get involved there as well i really enjoy the facebook page a lot as well we often post a lot of um pictures of upcoming pay view matches and universe mode news and things like that so it's a little bit of an extra way to kind of get some more news and things as well of uh, what i am doing a better way it's a better way to convey that news compared to twitter but um yes yeah, so tomorrow actually is my birthday so a bit of a birthday week this week um yeah, a bit of a birthday kind of podcast this week, but um, we've got Money in the Bank coming up this Sunday. We had Monday Night Raw this week, and I will say I actually thought Raw was uh, pretty enjoyable this week. It was really been really crappy the last few weeks, like really, really bad, but this week I actually enjoyed a number of the different segments quite a lot, so a um, bit of a positive review from me this week coming up on the show. Um, we're going to get into Money in the Bank, basically all of the predictions of what I think is going to happen, uh, who's going to win Money in the Bank, who's going to win the big two main events, and the tag team match, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be coming up in the show as well, and we'll have some questions as well to answer, and uh, we'll get into all of those. So, big week for me, we had the Night of Champions Pate review, which was streamed on Saturday night. Uh, I had to pull pretty much an all-nighter to um, get that done. Uh, we also did the Royal Rumble video stream as well, which um, the third member has been um, awarded their win, so they'll be part of the final. We have one more to go. That is hope. Hopefully, that's going to happen this weekend. At the moment, yes, it will be happening this weekend. I think at this stage, I'm playing um, SmackDown. Just bring it, I believe. So. I haven't uploaded that video yet. I have to get around to that. I took a couple of days off um, yesterday and the day before to do some different things. But um, yeah, so I'll be getting that video out probably tomorrow. So make sure you keep an eye out for that one. And you can enter into the fourth Rumble if you have not been picked. You haven't been in a Rumble yet. It's a perfect opportunity for you to get yourself involved. And your last chance to get yourself involved for an opportunity to win a free Bread and Play shirt. Um, pretty cool. I, I, I know. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Like I, The Bread and Play shirts... Trust me, you'll be surprised. When you get one, you'll love it. Um, I think they are great. I'm wearing one right now, actually, so I love those shirts. So that's the prize there, and just something we can do, like something a little bit different for the channel, a way to kind of get you guys more interactive, and I think we've achieved that. I think we have really achieved that. Um, it's been a pretty good response on the streams that we've done for it as well. Twice we've done it before a pay-per-view, so we've done it before NXT TakeOver and before um, Night of Champions, so we had a much larger audience than you know usual, but still you guys definitely got into it and enjoyed it, which was really, really good. Uh, speaking of Night of Champions, um, the stream went really well. We had about 400 combined viewers from YouTube and Twitch giving us our biggest audience ever for a pay-per-view stream. The previous record was probably around about 350. This is the first time we have streamed on both Twitch and YouTube for a pay-per-view. We've done it for NXT TakeOver, but this is the first time we've done it for an actual um Raw Smackdown pay-per-view. So a really, really good response. I think you guys, for the most part, enjoyed most of the pay-per-view. Obviously, there's a few things that you didn't like. Um, I know that the World Tag match got a, a terrible response. Um, but uh, the surprise at the end kind of saved it for a few of you guys, which is good. But um, 
Yeah, so I know a lot of you guys kind of uh, didn't dig a few things, but I think for the most part you enjoyed the majority of the pay-per-view, which is great. So very pleased that you guys really enjoyed that. Obviously a lot of time and effort went into that, getting that done, and uh, I think it turned out pretty good. There's a few things that I wasn't 100% happy about, but, you know, I just had to go with it and just went with it. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy at, at the end of the day how it went. Um, the stream was really, really good. Very, very, very successful. Everything went smooth. Everything went great. So that was a lot of fun. Only problem for me is I had to stay up till 7 a.m. in the morning to do it, but that was okay. Um, luckily, I had a cricket match to watch at the same time, Australia versus South Africa. So that was... Uh, a relief, a uh, big relief for me to have something to do. But for the most part, I was h- kind of hanging around in the chat and just kind of watching um, the the show and um, watching and uh, reading your reactions to everything and your discussions and kind of getting myself involved and just talking to as many people as I could. So that was really good to kind of interact with you guys on a much, much larger um basis obviously i try and interact as much as i can on twitter and especially on the forums and the website and everything like that when people email me as well i try and interact as much as i can through that but um yeah i don't probably don't get around to as many as i probably would like to do um i try and interact as much as i can on the youtube comments as well but on the live stream you know it was kind of good you know real-time reactions real-time interactions between me and the fans always really fun uh, I put the question on my on my website, would you like to see me live stream every Universe Mode episode? Um, the response at the moment is kind of like 50-50, so it seems like I probably won't do that. Uh, I guess not many people were really interested in that. I thought that would be a pretty good idea. I was thinking like, you know, I'll have a set date for every Universe Mode episode and a set time that that's, that's going to be live stream every single week so you know when that's going to come. Obviously, that would require me to be on the ball and kind of get my shit together. Uh, which could also encourage me to do that, but um, it would probably be very beneficial for my for my live stream and for my streaming to um, to do something like that. And obviously, thirty minute episodes, so it's kind of worth doing a live stream. If it was just ten minute episode, it wouldn't be worth it. But a thirty minute episode, not not bad. It probably could be worth actually live streaming, kind of thinking and looking into that as a potential option. But um, so far, the response hasn't been. As good as I probably liked, but the response for United Champions overall really, really positive. Very, very pleased about it. So thank you to everyone who came along to the live stream. Thank you to everyone who has watched the pay per view. Uh, I just uploaded the highlights video as well. So if you haven't had a chance to watch pay per view, you don't have enough time. Check out the highlights video. Surely you have four minutes to spare. Surely you'd hope so. Uh, if you don't have four minutes to spare, you're lying. You're lying to me. So don't don't be a liar. Watch the damn highlights at least. If not, if you can watch the whole pay per view, you will not be disappointed. I hope so. That's been one of the big things that's been going on this week. The other big thing, uh, I actually have a small, well, not small, but actually a little little project on the side. And um, when I say little, I mean like a project that could really like be a life changer. Like I'm actually working on a a life changing project. Now, I'm not going to give too much away, um, but uh, it's something I'm very, very passionate about and something that I'm really hoping I can do. The constraints really is this pretty much going to be money at this point and and the fact that I might not have enough money to invest into making this come to life. But if I can, if I can make it happen, man, it, it's going to be a real life changer. It could really change my life. So I've got basically a really, really great idea on how I'm going to do something and what I want to do. And I mean, the only thing that's going to kind of stop me is finding the right people to help me do it. And having the right enough money to be able to execute it. So, if I can get all that together, potentially six months time, things could be really, really different for me. Um, but I have been spending the last probably two days really kind of going with that. I came up with the idea a few days ago and just kind of went, you know what, I can actually do this. You know, I thought of the idea. Like I said, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm kind of being very vague about it because I don't want to give too much away at this point. But um, you know, I thought of the idea. And I just went, wow, like, I can't believe this hasn't been done. And I just kind of wanted to go with it. So I'm just kind of trying trying it out, um, creating a few things for it right now. And then the, 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 the slow process of making let it all come together. And um, yeah, so like I said, this could be a really life-changing, um, life-changing thing I'm working on. So I'm hoping that I can get it done. It'd be really, really cool if I can. If not, well... You know, at least I gave it a shot. You know, at least I tried to do it. At least I, you know, wanted to make that try and come to life. But um, that's the plan right now. That's kind of like what I'm focusing on a little bit. 
Um, it has kind of um, taken away from my YouTube stuff in the last couple of days, which I do apologize for. Uh, I need to kind of uh, juggle it a little bit better. I still have uh, four exams to do. I have an exam uh, on Friday, an exam on Saturday, and then next Friday I have two exams. So exams, exams, exams. i got to get through these exams, so I haven't really done much study to it at all which is always, always happens. I'm really slack with that. But if I can try and improve that, hopefully I can try and get through these exams, pass them. And because um, uh, after next Friday, I'll actually will have be, I'll be done for the semester. So my semester will be over and I'll be on about a three week to a month semester break. So that'll be really, really good, which will mean um, I'll have time to do all the things I want to do, more live streams, more videos, um, more everything. So I'll have time to kind of really go after a lot of the things I'm trying to work on and uh, be better for you guys as well. So, and I will say the, um, the the idea that I have about the whole business idea it does involve wrestling. So it will be an idea that you guys will be getting involved in and something that I will be asking for your assistance for in the future. So... And no, I'm not creating my own wrestling company before anyone jumps to that conclusion. But um, yes, yeah, so it is an idea that you guys will, I will need your assistance for at some point, And I will be giving opportunities for people to get involved in if it does happen. I'm not saying, I'm not giving away too much now because I feel like it may not happen. And I don't want to like get you guys excited or like promise anything it doesn't happen. So uh, I'll keep it on the down low right now. But I have been working on that and I need to go and get some videos done. I do plan on doing a vlog this week as well. I know some of you guys really enjoyed the vlog um, when I did one a couple months ago. It must be now. Probably a while ago now, isn't it? But um, I will be doing a vlog this week to celebrate the birthday. Um, so uh, it's going to feature the makings of a delicious cake. You're going to see Brendan Bakes. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. I promised it on my forums a few weeks ago, but it's going to happen. It's happening. So we're going to be doing that. So we're going to get another vlog in, and uh, that should be quite exciting. I know some of you guys have wanted to see a vlog again, and I actually really enjoyed doing the other vlog, vlog, I should say, and I want to kind of do some more, but it's just been like nothing to really vlog about. Like I haven't really done anything, so um, that's something I definitely want to do in the future. But that's really all there is. I know it was E3 this week as well. I didn't really have much of a chance to kind of talk or see too much of E3. I know um, God of War, there's a new one of that coming out, so that's really cool. Um, some more Fallout DLC, which is which is good. Uh, a new Forza, which is um, pretty cool. Crash Bandicoot remake, which is great. Uh, definitely going to be getting that. Um, but I haven't really had a chance to watch any gameplay. I know there was an Infinite Warfare stuff, and uh, I think COD 4 is coming out like a month um, early for the PlayStation 4, so that's really good. I'm really looking forward to that. And I know um, Battlefield uh, Battlefield uh, 1 had a trailer, and that looked really, really good. So some exciting stuff from E3. Um, I, I don't know when it ends or if it has already ended. I, have, I don't really follow it too much, but um, I'm hoping there's a few more announcements, especially like WWE stuff or... Um, Rockstar as well. I want to know what they're doing next, and um, yeah, so a few things I want to know. And you know, I'm not quite satisfied yet with it. I haven't. There's a few things that I want that I haven't seen come to life yet. But yeah, so that's a f uh, bit of news this week. I, obviously, I know the the shootings happened in Orlando. So if that was you that was affected, my my condolences. Um, that's terrible. You know, I still can't believe that gun laws. Uh, you can get guns so easy in America. Like I'm in Australia, right, and no one has a gun here. Like, no one has a gun. And a lot of people, like, this is going to be controversial, but a lot of people will basically say, look, murders are going to happen regardless. They will. No doubt they will. But isn't it a lot easier to murder someone with a gun than, I don't know, than a knife, you know? Like, it's just crazy. Like, crazy, crazy, crazy that so many people in America have a, have a gun. It kind of makes me a little bit fear. Like, I kind of fear going over to America. Like, I want to go there. And I want to go on a trip there, but I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm a little, hard, a little bit scared to go there a little bit because of the amount of guns and, and, you know, like things like this happening, like people just kind of like losing their mind for, and coming out and just unloading on these people. It's ridiculous. Like things like that, like kind of make you a little bit worried to go over there. So yeah, you know, I'm a little bit afraid or like I've got family that um just went to the United States um, last week. So my my parents and my sister just went to the United States, so it's kind of a scary time. Um, yeah, so 
hopefully nothing like that happens again. I know there's been a lot of shootings lately. Um, the famous singer also, um, I forget her name, Christina something. I, I apologize. I forget her, her last name. I wasn't, I didn't actually know who she was, but that was a tragic death as well. So the gun stuff has been really crazy. So, uh, my thoughts are with you for all those who have been affected in that. And, uh, that's a tragic story, man. I, that's really tragic. It's just, you know, we got rid of, we got rid of guns here in Australia years and years ago. And our media has been really like, in an uproar about it, like, kind of wondering, like, why is this, why do they still have guns, like, we're, as an Australian, I think us as a society just don't get it, we just don't get why you guys still have the guns, but, um, each to their own, but anyways, let's get to the wrestling chat, um, that's what I'm good at, I'm not good at talking the other stuff, I'm not very, uh, knowledgeable in that area, but, let's get to the wrestling stuff, this is what I'm knowledgeable at, this is what I know, we have Monday Night Raw this week, Money in the Bank coming up this Sunday, and I tell you what, I had no idea Money in the Bank was this Sunday. I was watching Raw, and I'm like, holy shit, wait, Money in the Bank is this Sunday? What the fuck? So that come around come around really, really quickly. I thought we had an, at least another week to go. But um, like I said early in the show, the last few weeks on Raw have been so, so bad. So it was good to have a pretty good Raw this week. I felt like this week's Raw, you know, I was about at the hour and a half mark, and that might have been the end of the Cena and AJ Styles contract signing or whatever it was. And I was like, wow, this has actually been a pretty good show. If there was half an hour left, we went to the Ambrose and Jericho main event right here, right now, we would have a pretty good show. This would be a pretty good episode of Raw. But then I realized we're only halfway done. We're only halfway home. So that's the problem. That was the problem. That's the problem that I've been talking about for a long, long time. So I know with the brand split coming, and it seems like Raw isn't going back to three hours. I know a little talk about SmackDown might be going three hours. I think that's been um, a load of bullshit. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I think SmackDown will t- stay two hours. But honestly, how are they going to make a three-hour show of Raw any somewhat exciting at all with half the roster on SmackDown? That concerns me even more. If Raw isn't exciting now with the whole roster, how is it going to be exciting when we only have half the roster on three hours? Of two hours, like I said, right there. An hour and a half of Raw, hour and a half in, I'm saying, this has been a good Raw, I've enjoyed this, and this is just my opinion, I know some people be like, ah, Raw was shit, but I actually thought Raw was alright, and an hour and a half in, I'm thinking, this is going to be good, then we're only, got, only halfway through, so, if they only had half an hour to go, even though I didn't like the fact that Ambrose and Jericho versed each other again, um, you know, it would have been a pretty good show, but, um, yeah, we still had more time to go, unfortunately. Not to say that the rest of the time that was filled in was bad. You know, no Gold Dango and fucking, or what is it, um, Breeze, Van Dang Breeze, or whatever the fuck it is, I don't know, and Golden Truth and all that crap. We didn't have that level of crap on the show this week, thank goodness, but, um, yeah, there was a, there was a few, like, the Sin Cara and Del Rio, um, that match, like, we all knew they weren't gonna win, they weren't gonna lose, and a lot of backstage segments this week, now, I noticed this because I was kind of really keeping track of what was going on, but, um, yeah, a lot of backstage stuff, a lot of promos this week, bit of a promo-heavy kind of a show, which wasn't bad, um, we'll start off with the start of the show, Fatal 4-Way Opener, I'm really looking forward to this match, 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 there we go, at Money in the Bank, actually, because, uh, you know, you think about it, these are four good teams. When is it, when's it? when been the last time we've had, like, a Fatal 4-Way match for the tag titles or any, like, multi-man tag team match? When has been the last time that we've had one of those and every team you can think might win the match? I can't honestly name one. This match is quite unpredictable. Now, the New Day have the tag titles. They've had them for a long, long time. They're not far away from becoming the longest reigning tag team champions. I believe they said that on Raw, London, Kendrick or whatever. They're not far away from beating that record. So that is possible that they might keep the belts on them until they beat that record. Very possible. But it's also very possible that Enzo and Cass, who have been doing really, really well, obviously getting a, a good push. Uh, Big Cass is getting a lot of love, getting mic time as well. So they're really liking him, um, him and Enzo as well. Doing very well. The Vaude Villains are probably the least likely to win this one. But still, have a small chance. They have a pretty decent chance in comparison to what we've seen in the bars. At least it's not like Epico and Primo as the fourth guys, you know, who you know who are not going to win this damn match. 
But you could see the Vaude villains winning, and you wouldn't be that shocked. You'd be like, all right, well, I didn't expect that, but, you know, fair enough. I can see that. So, yeah, this is actually going to make for a pretty good match. Like, a pretty good, unpredictable, fatal four-way tag team match. Although, I hate the concept of a fatal four-way tag team match. I hate it because there's only two in the ring at the same time. Instead of one of each team in the same ring, there's two of the four teams are in there. You know, Enzo's in there with Big E and the 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 club and the Vaude villains are sitting there twiddling their thumbs, thumbs going, what the fuck? You know, I, I, I hate that. I hate that so, so much. That's why, you know, that's going to put a damper on this match for me. I just hate the concept of how the WWE does a fatal four-way tag team match. It makes, to me, no sense why there isn't that. I get it. A fatal four-way tag match could be very chaotic, very hard to follow, and very hard to execute, but it'd be good. It would make sense. You should have one of each team member in there. You know, the fact that we don't is just is just stupid. You know, whoever came up with that idea is a stupid idiot, to quote Chris Jericho. So, I don't like it at all. But I think it should be a good match regardless of that stupid situation there. Um, I like the promos. I know it was a bit of a corny back and forth between Enzo and Cass and the New Day. I like the fact that they ripped on Kofi Kingston about the shoes. Obviously, that was a planned idea, but those shoes are stupid. And I read something on social media about it, and I kind of got a bit of a laugh when I saw the shoes. So it was kind of funny. You know, you think about it, Kofi Kingston, he's like the dad, like the old guy in the group, the veteran on the group. It makes kind of sense that someone like him, who's like a bit older, who's not really, but like a bit older compared to the other guys, would think that is damn cool. Like, it made sense. So I got a bit of a laugh at it. Obviously, having watched some of their, um, you know, their uh, Table for Three stuff or whatever, these other things outside of Raw and SmackDown and I haven't watched, having watched some of that clips and uh, some podcasts and stuff, I kind of got the joke a little bit more. So that was, uh, I found that pretty funny. The whole um, Francesca thing, pretending that you make, that, you know, they're making love to it. Not a big fan of that. I thought that was kind of a little bit, yeah, but um, whatever. I, it got a couple laughs from me. So overall, I didn't mind the segment. Ford Villains came in. And uh, the club came in, so that was what it was, and to set up the match. So that was not too bad. Not too bad, and a decent little eight-man tag match as well. So Raw started strong. That went for like 35 minutes or something. That was a long uh, start with those guys, but it started pretty strong. Um, We'll move ahead to the Shield reunion. The uh, Ambrose, Reigns, and Rollins in the same ring for the Ambrose Asylum. I tell you what, you know, I've kind of talked about Seth Rollins and how poor I think his promos have been in the past. But I will say this week, I really, really enjoyed his promo against Roman Reigns. I thought he was, he, I could, I felt like it was believable. He meant every word that he was coming back and he wanted that title badly. And, you know, I, I I just kind of felt like it was real. You know, I felt like the, the motion, the emotions were real. And I'm sure to a degree, they definitely were. So I felt like the promo was really, really good. Uh, even Reigns wasn't too bad either. So I thought that was a really, really good situation, a good segment. And I really have enjoyed, you know, the Reigns and Rollins thing to a degree. Um, the last few weeks, not so much. This week, they kind of got a little bit more excitement, a little bit more um, anticipation for me uh, for Money the Bank. They got a little bit more of that this week. And also Ambrose kind of stamping his authority on it, taking out Reigns and Rollins, well, taking out Reigns after uh, Reigns still got Rollins. So it kind of um, adds a little bit of a twist to it as well with the T's that are potential money in the bank um, cash in as well. Um, we haven't seen too much of Reigns. Like, Reigns isn't kind of like, you know, on every segment. We saw a lot of Ambrose this week. He was on there a lot. A lot of Owens, a lot of Del Rio, a lot of the money in the bank participants, except for Chris Jericho this week. Uh, for whatever reason. Chris Jericho had the big finish at the end, so he he kind of didn't need to go on before. But, um, yeah, so we haven't seen a lot of Reigns or Rollins. I feel like we probably need to see a little bit more from them. But, um, yeah, and we didn't see a lot of Cena or Styles. It's kind of the one segment, and that's it. So they're not really overexposing Reigns to all that much at the moment. I know about the list, the thing that um, happened this week, the top 10 lists. I actually left a comment on the video, I think I got like 200, 300 likes on my comment. Um, um, I basically say this is, 
Roman Reigns' this um, catchphrase shouldn't be in the top ten. You know, it's the isn't the best. Okay, this is what I said. Roman Reigns' this catchphrase isn't the best of the decade. It's probably the worst, uh, and I absolutely you know believe that. I think his catchphrase. I'm not a good guy, I'm not a bad guy, I'm, I'm the guy, sucks. I think that sucks, and um, I don't like it at all. Um, I, I was hoping that was going to be a one-and-done deal, but seems like that's going to be his thing going forward. He's the guy. I'm the guy, I'm the man, I'm the guy. You know, So that's his thing from now on. You know, That's going to be his deal, so it looks like we're stuck with that. Very creative, isn't it? Very, very creative. Not really, but um, that's what we're going to be stuck with. And to say that's the best, the best catchphrase in the last decade either means that every other catchphrase has been absolutely deplorable, or whoever picked this list um, is a Roman Reigns fan, or the WWE are just trolling us. I, th- I probably say they're trolling us, honestly. Um, does it really matter? It's just a, a list that WWE does just because, you know, just to get views and they do this list all the time. Yeah, it doesn't really matter at all, but, um, just goes to show the love they have for Roman Reigns and, you know, how, like, the blind optimism, even though, like, Reigns might not, you know, isn't loved and people harp on the guy all the time, they're still, still with Roman Reigns, they're still, Roman Reigns is still the man to them, and that's, you gotta... You know, that's where I have a little respect for the WWE, even though, like, they did it with Cena as well. Even though people are resisting it, they stick to their damn guns. If there's someone they want to damn push, they're going to freaking do it until they get killed. They kill themselves. So, um, kudos to them. Kudos to them. They do not give up on someone they want, and they have not given up on Roman Reigns yet. Um, even though the booze this week wasn't too bad. I thought the crowd was okay this week. Not bad. Uh, the booze... Obviously, we're there, but they weren't too bad this week. So I wouldn't say it's improving, but I think it's uh, money in the bank. He's gonna. I would assume he'll get shitted on, but um, yeah, it'll be quite interesting. Very interesting to see how that kind of um, plays out going forward. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, so I like that promo between the three Shield guys. The contract signing with Cena and. Uh, Styles, not a big fan of it. I thought it was just okay. I, th- I don't think it was that great. Um, I think both guys could have done a little bit better there. The whole 15 years in the making, uh, trying to build it up like that, like it's a, you know, this mega match that we've all been dreaming about. I have kind of, like, thought about it. Like, I will say, like, oh, yeah, that would be a pretty good match. But it's not a match, like, when I think of dream matches in my mind. It was never a match. It wouldn't even be top 20 matches on my dream match. Like, a... Oh my god, this is a match I would love to see. Like, um, when I think of an opponent for AJ Styles, I would think of like you know Daniel Bryan or a CM Punk or a, you know like a a great like a worker similar to him, not John Cena. Like, I think this match will be good. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't say it's a dream match or a match I've been looking forward to for fifteen years. So, yeah, the hyperbole in the situation a little bit and. Um, yeah, he's kind of turning me off a little bit, but I still feel like it's a big, big match, and I think it's going to be pretty good. So they try their best to kind of create this match as probably a bigger deal than what it really is. Um, we'll talk about the predictions later on, but uh, it's kind of hard to kind of take Styles too seriously against Cena. Uh, I still feel like Cena's going to win, but we'll talk more of that later. Um, another thing that kind of really uh, was weird, like this week we had Charlotte losing... In a matter of minutes to Paige, who Paige is barely on Raw as it is. And Charlotte got the job of entrance, as did Paige, I believe. None of them got an entrance. So, she got a, a job of entrance, and she lost in minutes to Paige. Clean. I, I just didn't I didn't get that at all. I, I don't know what the fuck happened there. So, is Charlotte, has she pissed someone off? Like, is she going to lose this belt soon? Like, or is this just a storyline... I think they were trying to make some dissension between Dana Brooke and, and Charlotte, but um, I didn't really get much of that. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. And, I, you know, someone said this on a, another podcast I listened to earlier today. They were saying that the the women's matches are getting shorter and shorter again. Like, there was a period of time where they were really, really good, like, you know, standard matches with the guys. But a match like this, I think I don't think we had any other women's matches on the show we had the one women's match, and it went for, what, three minutes? You know, four minutes? So, getting quite short again. We'll have to look, about, look at that again next week. 
um, how long the matches were again and how long the match will be at the pay-per-view because this is going to be a tag team match between Charlotte and Dana Brooke versus Becky Lynch and Natalia, which will be my piss break because I could not give two flying fucks about that match at all. So I don't think that match will go more than, you know, eight minutes. So the matches are going to... They're shrinking a little bit, aren't they? So that's a little bit of a concern. Who's to blame there? Is it because of a lack of reaction? No, I don't think so. I think Charlotte's been doing pretty good as a champion. I think she's been steady. I think the reaction's been there. A bit of heel heat when Ric Flair was around. Will she lose a bit of steam without Ric? Probably for a while. Dana Brooke, putting her with Dana Brooke is, is such a bad idea. The whole making it make a name for yourself. Like, she's breaking out on her own essentially, getting rid of Ric Flair, but yet she brings in someone else to help her. It makes literally no sense. Like, why didn't she just keep keep Ric Flair around, someone she can trust? Now, she's brought in Dana Brooks, someone who she barely knows, really, and um, not quite sure where, you know, what's going on there. Is she with them or is she with me? Like, wouldn't you just keep fucking Ric Flair around? Like, it makes no sense at all. It makes no sense, which is why... I couldn't give a crap about it. So I get why Dana Brooks with her. Um, she was going to be with Emma. They had to change plans because of injury. They kind of panicked. And they said, all right, Charlotte, she's our top heel. We needed another a top heel, but we don't really have any other top heels at the moment. Had to be Charlotte. You know, because they felt as though Dana Brooks couldn't do it by herself. So yeah, that's why. But um, it doesn't make any sense. And it's hurting Charlotte. It's hurting her. Charlotte needs to be on her own. She's better than Dana Brooke by leaps and bounds. Fair enough, you have Ric Flair there. That the family ties, it makes sense. People like seeing Ric Flair, whatever. But make it out on her own, win matches on her own, and um, she'll be much more credible. And I think the crowd will get into her a little bit more. I think it might be time for Charlotte to uh, drop the title as well. Has she held the title? I keep thinking it's Night of like I think I keep thinking we're in like Night of Champions territory. We're only at Money in the Bank, aren't we? Because I was going to say she nearly held it for a year because I keep thinking I'm at Night of Champions, but no, i got to get back in the real world. But um, yeah, so she's held the title for quite a long time, so it might be nearly time to give her a break from it. Um, I would have given her Becky Lynch the belt, but I think she's lost a lot of momentum as well. So and Sasha Banks is, uh, well, nowhere to be really found, and Paige is doing so badly, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the plan is for that. Maybe Paige is going to get uh, an, an opportunity down the line. That's maybe why they gave her the win. I, I don't know. But um, finally, we had the Jericho and Ambrose situation. They had uh, another match. They had one on SmackDown, another one on Raw. Like, they are just having match after match after match. This is why the WWE, like, this is another reason why the WWE kind of need the brand split a little bit. And another reason why the WWE kind of annoys me. We see the same shit all the time, like match after match after match. You know, they have no ideas on what to do of, of on SmackDown. So basically, they just do the same thing again. And the thing is that they pretend that it doesn't happen. They pretend that SmackDown doesn't exist. So I guess they realize that no one watches SmackDown. So since I didn't watch it SmackDown last week, you know, technically that match never happened. And now I'm seeing it fresh again. So it's just whatever. But um, yeah, Jericho losing... A few matches in the last few weeks, but he got the the, the big finish. Um, him grabbing the briefcase at the end after Sami Zayn took everyone out. So Jericho got the big highlight finish. He's not going to win. And I guess that's a segue into our predictions for Money in the Bank. I don't think Jericho is going to win. I'm still sticking to my gun saying Kevin Owens is going to be the man. Um, Dean Ambrose obviously coming out of this show looks like the clear hot favorite. But I think it's, for me, either Ambrose or, or, or Owens. And I'm going to say Kevin Owens gets it. Um, Sami Zayn, nowhere near that status. Del Rio is, you know, almost done. He's just, no one wants to see that. But since no one wants to see it, happened with Sheamus last year. Very possible Del Rio could get the briefcase. I God, I hope not. Um, who else? Cesaro would love to see it, but I just don't believe they're going to give him that opportunity and um, whoever else, whatever. Did I cover everyone? Everyone? Maybe not, but I don't care. So, yeah, so that's the situation there. I still think Kevin Owens is the favorite to win, despite, um, you know, he had a lot of airtime this week on Raw, obviously. I still think he's a bit, you know, doing good. So I think he could be a favorite to win. And I say he's a favorite to win because most likely Roman Reigns is going to be the, the championship holder, um, and they'll need a heel to cash in, and Kevin Owens will be a perfect person. Dean Ambrose, 
Yes, they could do the storyline. Ambrose cashes in on Roman Reigns, turns heel, fuses with Reigns. Um, very possible. Would be a good storyline, no doubt about that. But if you make Kevin Owens money in the bank and he cashes in and wins the belt, you essentially will create a new top player from that. Kevin Owens is on the verge of breaking through to the main event scene. So a win like that and a championship win will get him over the line. Um, gets a big enough reaction, I think, and gets has enough credibility to take that next step. And um, I think with the money in the bank, you could do that. Ambrose, to me, I consider him to be a main event star already. So he's already there in my, in, in my eyes. Kevin Owens, not quite. So we can get Kevin Owens across the line with this money in the bank. Well, I think that will serve his purpose quite well. And giving it to someone like Del Rio would just be five steps backwards. You know, let's focus on some new guys. And Kevin Owens, I think, is ready to take that next jump into the main event. Um, we'll start from the uh, the bottom of our Money in the Bank matches. We had the kickoff show again. It's Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. How many times have we seen this fucking match? Like five, six, seven, eight times. Um, I will be skipping the pre-show again. I, I, I just don't care anymore. I've seen it enough. Like, what? How? What difference is it going to be? Last time it was a, a no DQ match or something, wasn't it? Or two out of three. It was something a little bit different. This time it's just a regular match. So I don't see how it's going to be much different. Um, a Charlotte and Dana Brooke versus Nick, uh, Natalia and Becky Lynch match. Um, I think Natalia and Becky Lynch will win that one and start to begin some dis- dissension already between Charlotte and Dana Brooke. I think they're kind of backtracking a little bit. I think they kind of realize that's a mistake, so they might try and end that quickly. And also, you give Natalia and Becky Lynch a win by pinning Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke takes the pin, keeps the champion looking okay, and then you can set up again for Natalia and Becky Lynch to chase the champion um, at a later date. Um, Cena versus AJ Styles. Would I, I would like to say AJ Styles is going to win. I think AJ Styles should win. Will he win, though, in my opinion? Um, I think yes. I think he will win. I think Cena will put him over. I think he will. Um, I hope he does. If, they, if Cena puts Styles over, then at least Styles will look pretty good. Let's remember, though, the next two, three pay-per-views, Cena's going to beat him three times then. So he might give Styles the win there, and Cena has to try and chase the win back, and he will get the win back, and he'll just end up winning overall. But um, another, like I was listening to a show earlier today, and they rose the question, you know, is there a possibility of someone else debuting to help Styles out, a.k.a. a Finn Balor? And, you know, I didn't really think about this at all, but I think this could be a possibility. Like, it didn't really cross my mind when I was watching Raw today. I never really thought that it could, you know, an extra person may debut. But it's not a bad thought. I mean, Gallows and Anderson, they're not going to be there to help Styles out. Maybe someone else might be there to help Styles out. It's a thought. Um, But, yeah, I do think someone is going to return at this pay-per-view. I think either Randy Orton or Bray Wyatt will probably return at this at this pay view, I think they're the two guys due to come back. So um, I think it's quite possible. To me, it probably seems like Bray Wyatt might be the one to make the most sense to come back and get himself involved in the world title picture, maybe. Uh, Randy Orton could do it, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I don't know where Randy Orton would fit at this point. Not sure what his future lies. Um, so I'm going to say AJ Styles will beat John Cena. Um, US title... Uh, Rusev will beat Titus O'Neil. I think Rusev just got the belt. As much as I like Titus O'Neil, then I don't think they're going to give him the belt. And Titus O'Neil got bitched out on Raw today. Rusev beat the shit out of him. So uh, even though that generally means that the, you know whoever gets the attack before the pay per view generally will uh, lose at the pay per view. That's kind of a bit of a, a secret rule from the WWE. But I don't think that's going to happen in this circumstance. I think Rusev will get the win. Uh, the Fatal Four Way for the tag titles. Like I said, it's a lottery. Um, I think the New Day would be the favorites. I think Gallows and Anderson, I think I would like to see them win the titles, but I feel like they're involved elsewhere. So they're kind of in this match to give them something to do. Uh, Enzo and Cass, I think they don't need the titles at this, uh, yet. So I think the Vaud Villains or the New Day are the likely teams to get the win because the Vaud Villains, they would need the titles to kind of advance them further. Enzo and Cass are doing well on their own as it is. New Day, uh, you know, lose the titles, they'll be fine. Vaud Villains, the titles could really help them 
kind of get a little bit more credibility and a bit more of a reaction, make them a bit more of a bigger deal. I feel like they're not really a big deal yet. I don't really care for them yet. So um, if they gain a bit more momentum, for example, winning the titles, that might help them out. Um, And finally, the world title match, Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. I think it's pretty obvious Roman Reigns will win. I think it's going to be a screw job finish or some, some kind of kind. DQ or uh, something, Roman Reigns will survive somehow. I don't know. Maybe it'll just be straight up clean. I wouldn't surprise me. So I think Reigns will win and retain. And I think someone will probably return and attack Roman Reigns after the match. Or maybe someone will try and cash in. Something will happen at the end of the match to kind of get your mind off of the Roman Reigns win and something there. So maybe Randy Orton or Ray Wyatt returns or maybe Finn Balor debuts or something. Something crazy might go down. I don't know. But um, that's my predictions for Money in the Bank. Let me know your predictions in the comments. Who do you guys have winning all these matches? I think Money in the Bank is going to be pretty good. You know, they've been saying all oh, WrestleMania caliber matches, but there is. There definitely is. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins is a big match. The Money in the Bank match is pretty good. The tag match is pretty good. Cena and Styles is good. And um, yeah, so if Rue 7 titles will be okay. So there's a pretty good card. Pretty good card on our hands there. So we're going to get into what is Brendan playing before we get into our questions to wrap up the show this week. So what is Brendan playing? Uh, Good question. What have I been playing? Um, You know, actually, um, I went on the PlayStation Store and actually bought some of the classic games. I actually bought um, like Pac-Man. I forget the other ones because I've never played them before. But I'll just say Pac-Man. So I I was... um, you know, kind of browsing around on some games, and I saw there was a, a little old school throwback pack. You can get Pac Man for like four bucks. So I thought, eh, fuck it, why not? So I got that. I was playing a bit of Pac Man, so that was cool. Never really played much of Pac Man before, at least not the original. So that was kind of cool to get that, even if it was on the PlayStation 4. Um, the controls weren't all that responsive, a bit clunky, but whatever. So I had a bit of fun doing that. Um, still been playing a bit of Overwatch. I kind of cooled off on it a little bit because I feel like. Um, I, I keep using the same kind of, you know, hero, so I kind of be a little bit bored of that, and um, I feel like it's a bit of a chore to kind of get um, used to someone else at this point, so I'm kind of like, I've just cooled off in a little bit, I'll get back on it in a few days or so, time when I have a little bit more extra time in my hands. Um, been playing a lot of Fallout 4 as well, still kind of playing that, slowly progressing with the story mode, I, I recently finished... Nearly, not quite finished, but I've I've done majority of my big arena that I've made. Um, basically, I've created a, an arena where I'm going to have um, creatures and enemies fight people from my um, settlement. It doesn't really work all that well, unfortunately. Um, the the creatures don't really run after people; they kind of run away and hide a little bit. And my people don't really kind of come after them and try and you know shoot them very well so it, it doesn't work very well but um i i tried making it unfortunately the game doesn't hasn't really patched that in really well and hasn't created that all that great but yeah i've been doing that um and like i said slowly progressing through the main storylines and enjoying that so that's been interesting as well and that's probably all i've been about you know basically all i've been doing um yeah, I haven't played, been playing too much. I played a bit more of um, YouTuber's Life as well. I think I went to about 150,000 subscribers in that game or something. So that was that was fun. I was doing that whilst um was waiting for some of my matches to record on um on Night of Champions. So I got a bit of time on that. So that was good. Um, that was a good game. YouTuber's Life is a good game. I think it's very interesting. So if you haven't played that, I know a lot of um, other YouTubers have played that, streamed that, blah, blah, blah. I think it's a pretty good game. So I definitely would recommend that. So that was uh, still a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, and, um, I would kind of want to find the next game for me to kind of go to. I need to kind of finish Uncharted. I started it and unfortunately I kind of stopped with it. So I want to get to that and I want to, yeah, I, the last week have just been like kind of a work week and, you know, doing the pay view. Didn't have much time to game because all my time gaming is spent recording matches and doing all that. And, re- and yeah, so not a lot of gaming this week. Hopefully, um, after my exams, get a lot more gaming in and try and get some more platinums and um, some more trophies and uh, have have some fun. Have some fun there. But um, obviously a few things I've got coming up, so I definitely need to kind of get through that and then hopefully can enjoy the gaming time. Uh, we're going to get into our questions for this week. I will say not a lot of questions this week, mainly 
a few people who kind of uh, helped me out this week and gave me a lot to kind of talk about. But uh, we have some questions. And the first one comes from Roy the Boy. He wants to know, will I watch the Euro 2016? If so, which country will I support? Now, not a soccer guy. Football, sorry. Just slipped the tongue. Oh, my God. Shit. Um, not a football guy, really. But um, I don't have a team. I'm, not, I'm from Australia. So if Australia was in it, obviously they're not. Um, I would support Australia. But other than that, um, I don't support any other country other than my own, I guess. Um, but... Uh, Euro the Euro 16 it was actually uh, there was a match the England and Russia game was on the same time that my um, pay-per-view was on so a lot of people were ditching my pay-per-view to watch the uh, the Euro game so the the football game so that was a little disappointing I didn't know anything about this I didn't even know this was happening so I can't blame them I probably would have uh, skipped out too if I, if I liked it but uh yeah, so I didn't know about that. So that kind of uh, was a bit of a letdown for my pay-per-view. But uh, I think uh, a lot of you guys try to watch both or hang around for both or uh, watch as much as you can before the game started. So that was cool. But um, yeah, so I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't even know this competition was on. And I wouldn't have known unless people kind of uh, said, oh my God, I would like to watch it. But uh, the year is 2016 on, so I can't. So that was, that sucked. Uh, Roy the Boy again. With the brand split coming up, would you split up the White family or keep them together? This is an interesting one. The brand split does offer the opportunity to split up a number of different teams, but I don't think they should. I think Enzo and Cass are good together. The, the New Day are good together. I think they should just keep the teams together and, and put them on the uh, different brand. The Wyatts, there's four of them. Could they succeed on their own? Well, look at Harper and look at Rowan. It didn't really work out. Harper was going okay, but they would end up making him into a joke. Bray Wyatt on his own wasn't great either. So the White family, I think, need to stay together. Uh, them on the them on their own is not a great um, deal. It's not like the Shield where every single one of them is going to be a, a megastar. On their own, really, Harper and, and White are really the only chances of kind of breaking through. Strowman is still too green. Um, I don't know. Like, it's interesting, like... Um, Rowan and Strowman must be just sitting at home doing nothing. You know, hopefully Strowman's just been, you know, refining his skills at NXT or something in the performance center because he's uh, just kind of waiting for his, um, waiting for Bray to come back before he can really do anything. So it's a little bit of a, a sucky situation for him. That would definitely suck, you know, because it's out of your hands. Like, you didn't do anything wrong. Like, you know, your partner just went down and you have to sit on the sidelines. But I guess that's one of the the hardships of being in a tag team. I mean, there's probably more benefits in a way in being a tag team sometimes. You know, you, you only showcase the, the great moments of yourself. You don't get go, you can be covered up by your tag team for your flaws um, compared to when you're on your own. But um, if one of your teammates goes down in this situation, their leader, well, they can't be exactly be on TV. I mean, would anyone want to care? Would anyone care if it was just Rowan and Strowman? Um, beating people up. I, You know, it'd be okay, but I don't think it'd be very effective without Bray at all. Um, from Thomas Speller, which sport would you have most likely gone professional in? Um, the only sport that I was ever really any good at is cricket, and I still play cricket. Obviously, I'm turning 21 tomorrow. By the way, I'm getting old. Oh, my God. No, nah, I'm not getting... No, nah, also, I'm not really getting old, but um, I'll be legal in the States and I think just about everywhere, so that's good. So it's too late for me to go professional or anything, and I would never be able to do it anyways. Um, but uh, if I was going to go professional, it would be cricket. Um, the only sport I was ever really good at. I wasn't um, good to the point where I was like um, getting selected for representative teams or anything like that. I wasn't that good, but you know, I wasn't terrible. I was a decent little player. Uh, I enjoyed doing it a lot. Um, not too bad at, at uh, specifically indoor cricket, but there's obviously not really um, any professional opportunities to play that. There is, but there isn't really. I mean, there is. You can play for Australia, for example, but there's no money in it or anything like that. So you're not really going to get much out of that. But um, cricket's probably the only sport. Um, I played soccer for a while, but I was really never wasn't that great at soccer. I was I wasn't fit enough uh, or athletic enough, fast enough to kind of be uh, sustain. You know. Uh, soccer longevity or whatever it wasn't really good to kind of take the next step i uh, played a bit of rugby league too um i had a bit of size and i was pretty good like i can catch i can pass i can 
you know, I'd probably, if you know, if you're a rugby league fan, I would probably be a bit of a playmaker second rower, for example. That was kind of like my role, but um, yeah, I didn't really, I just didn't really enjoy playing it. I did, but I kind of like, I felt like I was going to get an injury was around the corner for me, and uh, I'm thinking about perhaps going back and playing rugby league maybe next year, and playing that again. I'm kind of thinking about it, but I've I've had some knee troubles in the in the past, so I'm not quite sure if I'll even be able to do that. So. I don't know, but um, that's probably really big. So cricket would be the answer. If I had to pick a sport, I would have gone professionally in that. Uh, Roy the Boy, do I see any potential in Jason Jordan? Yeah, I do. Uh, on their own, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan, I still think both of them could really succeed on their own. As a team, they're really great. I think this is a really good potential. Um, but it could be a situation where it's Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. You know, both work well as a team, great in-ring workers, but can they break through on their own and get past that, you know, IC title threshold? I, I think, you know, if Shelton Benjamin couldn't do it, I kind of worry if, you know, a Jason Jordan can. Obviously, in this different environment, you know, not as many stars and, you know, not as many guys with that size, it's quite possible that he could break through. Could Chad Gable break through? That would be very difficult to say. I don't, I would have to say no. Chad Gable would be someone who would win the IC title. I think. Jason Jordan, though, I wouldn't say I believe he could be a world champion at some point, but I, I could see it happening if he develops even more in the next five or so years. He could get to that point. Um, another question here from Thomas Speller. Have I ever met any of your of my fans? What is my most memorable fan moment? I actually haven't. I actually haven't met any of my fans in real life before. Um... I haven't really put myself in a situation where I can. Obviously, most of you guys didn't even know what I looked like until recently, where I started doing streams with the face cam and even and did the vlogs and stuff. So most of you guys didn't know who I was recently. And I live in Australia. My audience, I, my sixth, my sixth uh, biggest audience, I believe, is from Australia. It's a very low percentage. I think it's probably like five percent of my audience. Or something less, even less than that, it comes from Australia. So the chances of me meeting someone here is very, very slim. I know I have talked to some people who live near, do live near me, are in the area, but I haven't put myself in that situation. Um, I walk around, I walk around the streets all the time wearing my Brennan Play stuff. Like I wear my shirts around in public. Nearly every time I go out, I just, I love where I just wear my shirts all the time. So. Um, yeah, so it's quite possible that maybe someone potentially has seen me. I don't know, but yeah. So no, I haven't met anyone, and I don't know like how I'd react. I've never met anyone. I think it'd be cool. I think I'm a bit of, I'm very shy in real life, so I don't know. I kind of would be a little bit awkward. And I don't know. Like I, I think I'm a very approachable person. I feel like I'm not at all. I feel like I kind of give that look where don't fucking come talk to me. Like I feel like I have that. I give that vibe, so I think maybe some people wouldn't approach me and wouldn't, you know, be game enough to do it. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I I haven't met anyone though, but um, it would definitely be cool to do it. Final question of the day, and again from Thomas Speller. Big thanks to Roy the Boy and Thomas Speller this week. They kind of gave me a lot of questions. They gave more, a lot more questions, but um, uh, we'll call it quits here. Which storyline from your universe mode would I like to see play out in real life WWE? Um, the one with the Balor Club. Uh, I think the Balor Club would have been a really good stable. I think that would have been uh, a lot of fun. Didn't have to be Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins against them. Could have been someone else. But um, yeah, the Balor Club storyline where they kind of taken over Raw. Finn Balor gets the title and kind of um, takes over Raw. So I think that would have been pretty cool. Um, the the whole Rock and Randy Orton storyline that I did, well, I thought that would have been pretty cool. Um yeah, there's been a, there's definitely been a few, um, no doubt. But uh, in recent times, I definitely think the uh, the the Ballot Club storyline would definitely be pretty cool and, and quite relevant right now in WWE. So um, I would I would have liked to see Balor and the and Gallows and Anderson be together. But um, it is Styles. But I feel like that's not going to be the permanent deal. I still feel like Finn Balor is a possibility to join that group. But um, who knows? Who knows, but uh, all I know is that this is going to be the end of the podcast for this week. If you guys enjoyed it, please do leave a like on this episode. Please 
Leave some questions for next week. We're going to have money in the bank to talk about. I'll try and remind myself to post the Facebook page. I've been so inconsistent. I know. I apologize. So I'm going to try and remind myself to get onto that. Um, and uh, so you guys have more ways to post your questions. And obviously, when I post the Facebook page questions, you kind of remind you because you might forget. So it kind of reminds you as well. So I need to do that. Um, follow me on Twitter at Brendan Plays um, and leave the Facebook page a like as well. Brendan Plays official links in the description. Um, go ahead and support the Patreon page if you want to leave a donation and kind of support the podcast there and help me out. That would be really appreciated. Um, keep tuning into the streams and keep watching the videos. We've got some cool stuff lined up in the future. Potentially a vlog this week out um, and the, the Royal Rumble video. So make sure you sign up for Royal Rumble number four. Um, I need to get some more NBA stuff and kind of finish off the UFC as well. I need to get some time to kind of do that. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of that this week and um, kind of working on some little projects that I've got going on and doing the exam stuff as well. So I hope you guys all have a great week. Tomorrow, June 15th is my birthday. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a pretty good day tomorrow. So that should be a lot of fun. I know my girlfriend's going to spoil me. So that's going to be pretty good. So I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you all next Tuesday.